guys, it's Julia. Welcome back to my channel. So today's video is going to be your monthly anti-haul. You guys seem to like the format I did last month. I don't think I'm going to do the get ready with me anti-hauls every month, but today I'm doing the same thing again because today's video is once again partially sponsored by Odin's Eye, so we'll get to that later on. But for this month's anti-haul, it's a little different because I'm talking about items that I actively had to talk myself out of. <laughs> this anti-haul is items that buttered my muffin. That might not be the working title. So while I anti-haul the products, I will also be doing this makeup look that you see on my face right now. I use the Soulmate palette from Odin's Eye to create this eye look today. So stay tuned for that. This is gonna be my first video after a pretty long break that I took for personal mental health reasons. So I will be doing a little bit more of a sporadic upload schedule while I just try and um, kind of figure things out. Not gonna talk about it, but I am glad to be back today. So I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. I am wearing my Nature's Anatomy brain merch in today's video. Let's get a Dew Fairy pop in, shall we? Today's Dew Fairy of the day is Alessandra. Thank you so much for having your bell on. I always recognize you when you comment, so thank you for coming back. I think that is all I have to say. Let's get talking about the products that buttered the muffin. Hi, hello, let's get this show on the road. I start off with primer today. Got a couple tags in this one. Usually whenever like a colorful palette comes out, particularly from an indie brand, um, a couple people tag me. This is the Be Perfect Cosmetics Carnival Round 3 palette. And the Carnival palettes are a collab between Be Perfect and Stacey Marie Mue, who is a I think British makeup artist. They've come out with two palettes before. This one looks to be like the round two, which was a very large palette. And the round one was a bit of a smaller color scheme, but still pretty much like a rainbow palette. I really, really wanted the round one when it came out and I was planning on purchasing it at some point and reviewing it on my channel, but it I never really got around to it. And now I'm not really interested in trying it out anymore. The round two, I didn't really enjoy just because of the bigger size. And then round three is also that larger size. I think the color scheme in this one is really beautiful. It is a rainbow palette, but I feel like there are some shades in there that you wouldn't necessarily find in like a typical Brogy Biv color scheme. Particularly, I really, really love the right side of the palette with all the purples in there. I think that side is gorgeous. There are like a few overlapping shades where I feel like some of them, especially the mattes, are a little bit too similar to warrant having that many shades in the palette. I think this color scheme could have been pared down maybe by at least like 10 shades, but I've heard really good things about the formula. If you're wanting some really, really good indie brand colorful shades, um, kind of like an alternative to the James Charles palette. I've heard really good things about this, and it seems to be a very matte dominated palette, which I think is awesome if you're trying to start out a colorful eyeshadow collection. So I will not be buying this palette just because it's a little bit too big for me, and also I don't really have an interest in trying out the Carnival palettes anymore. But again, congratulations again to Stacey. I think she's doing really beautiful palettes with them. What foundation should I go for today? I'm gonna do Peach Perfect. I haven't done that in a long time. This next one might be a little out of character for me, but I cannot lie, I really was considering getting this one, even though I know that I actually hate the product. Juno & Co is coming out with Spongebob sponges. I've exposed my vendetta against the microfiber sponges. I don't like the Juno & Co one. I also don't like the ColourPop one. I personally don't really love the way that microfiber sponges apply my foundation. If these were not microfiber sponges, like if these were just like regular foam sponges, I'd probably buy this. I just think it's a really cute concept. Obviously Spongebob is a sponge. I am so powerful. My mind. Oh, I'm honestly surprised that no other brand has done a SpongeBob sponge. I guess it's kind of probably a hard collab to lock down. So um, kudos to Juno and Co for doing that. I think this is probably going to sell out really quickly. That being said, though, the more I consider it, these are really cute sponges. You have the little Patrick face on the pink one, which I think is adorable, but they are really, really light colored sponges. And I feel like light colored sponges, even though you can like wash them regularly, they do tend to get stained pretty easily and you would throw these away eventually. So I don't really see what the point in buying a cute sponge is gonna be if it's gonna be disposable anyways Unless I guess you like bought this for displaying in which case that kind of defeats the purpose of the sponges <laughs> So I'm not getting this but I'm sure it's gonna sell out really quickly And I think if anyone like grew up with Spongebob, which I personally didn't I was a Disney Channel kid all the way My shit was Mickey Mouse Clubhouse and Little Einsteins. That's it. But I think this is adorable very well done I think the packaging also kind of matches up with the aesthetic and this is definitely gonna do really well. So yeah, <laughs> I'm just taking my foundation and I'm doing my spot foundationing once again. I've been loving this technique recently, especially with very like thin textured foundations like this. I feel like it looks really, really nice and skin like, even though this is a matte foundation, which you guys know I don't like. But if I layer on like dewy setting spray afterwards, it gets it to a nice luminosity. I'm going with a tiny bit of powder on my forehead. I know, who is she? But actually, my skin has been producing oil <laughs> for the first time this summer. So so I've actually found myself needing some powder. Maybe that's just because I've been like working 10 hour days, but still I don't normally powder my face when I'm going to class, but this has been getting some use recently. Yay, she's producing sebum. It's good to know my oil glands aren't dead. Okay, this next, <laughs> this 
this next one. <laughs> Let's use Tarte Shape Tape. I don't like using this, but I'm trying to get rid of it, so don't kill me. This Morphe palette briefly buttered my muffin. Morphe's coming out with a 35C palette. They had a 35C back in the day. I believe it was a rainbow palette. I believe I actually owned it. <laughs> but this 35C palette is, it, it's called a Chic Artistry palette, but I thought the C stood for Cool Tone because this is like a cool toned dream palette. It's honestly, it's such a pretty color scheme. Still too many colors, but I don't really think that there's as many overlapping shades as in regular Morphe palettes where there's like six of the same brown. The bottom row is really interesting. I like that there's kind of like cooler toned olive greens paired with some lilacs in there. That's a really interesting color scheme, which we're going to see later. Greens with purples is actually really pretty. But as far as color scheme go, this is probably one of the most interesting color schemes I've seen from Morphe besides that pastel palette they did earlier this year, which I don't think got good reviews. It actually kind of gives me a slightly cooler toned version of the Kathleen Light's um, So Jaded palette from Colourpop, which personally I have heard good things about that formula as well. I haven't bought from Morphe since my James Charles palette actually, so like two years ago. But I think that they did a really nice job with this one, both in terms of color scheme and just like not creating something completely the same as they usually do. Who the heck? Ohio? Okay. I won't be buying this one just because I have a lot of colors like this, especially I think the neutrals in this palette, very similar to the Too Faced um, Natural Lust, including some of the kind of jade toned greens in there. So I don't need this one, but I do think it's really pretty and I think it's one of the most interesting things that Morphe's come out with in a while. Ugh, I think I took too long talking while I was trying to blend this out and now the sharp tape shape is like not moving on my under eyes. I hate when that happens. I'm just gonna set, try and set this concealer and hope that the powder covers it up. <laughs> Yikes. We're gonna do contour next. I look really pale. The next thing that kind of piqued my interest were the Kylie Cosmetics Lip Blush Lip Kits. This is coming out fairly late for what it is, but I was kind of interested in it. I thought it was maybe like a cream blush and liquid lipstick in one, which I might have been interested in, but basically it's like a blotted lipstick. So very similar from what I can tell to the ColourPop Ultra Blotted Lips, which are $7. And it does come with a liner. I was mostly just attracted to these because of the Millennial Pink packaging. But also I love me a good blotted lip. The reason I won't be buying these ones, obviously I do have my ColourPop ones. I don't necessarily think that Kylie and ColourPop share the same lip formula. I think Kylie's matte lip kits are a little bit better than ColourPop's Ultra Matte Lips and that they're not in my opinion, the same formula. I'm pretty happy with my ultra blotted lips, but also I don't think that you have to use a particular blotted lipstick to get a blotted lip effect. So for example, I've been using the Odin's Eye Alpha Matte Lip Stains for kind of a blotted lip effect, just applying a small amount of this onto the center part of my lips and then blurring it out with my middle finger. I think that gives you the similar effect to what a kind of blotted popsicle lip would do, but because it's a stain, I feel like it lasts a little bit longer. I think beauty brands are just really quick to kind of push a new product and be like, hey, you need this to get this specific effect, when most products can be used in a very multi-purpose way in order to do multiple things. The color, the color, the color, okay, I can't talk while I do my eyebrows. Brief pause. Eyebrow. Next up on this list is a formula that I forgot how much I loved. Colored Rain's coming out with these new beautiful palettes, the Juicy Boost eyeshadow palette, which comes in two different ways. So you can get it in a flat version with all the colors laid out, or you can get it separated into two smaller palettes, um, which like come in a book version, which I think is really cute. Some really beautiful colors in here. Definitely a very fruity, very tropical vibes and predominantly mattes, which I love. I do really, really like Colored Rain's formula. I decluttered my Queen of Hearts palette. I want to say like a little bit over a year ago just because I wasn't using the color scheme. I do remember their formula being one of the best indie brand formulas I've ever tried and I really like the option where you can have like the two smaller mini palettes or the big palette in one. So I'd be interested to see if more brands would kind of adopt this format where you can pick between a bigger palette or smaller ones. It is expensive I would say but I don't really mind paying a little bit more to support indie brands. This one did make me do a double take. I was like mm, maybe I want this one but I don't need to add any more like rainbow or rainbow adjacent palettes at the moment. However I think they did a great job with this one and I really like the idea idea of the kind of convertible thing. Um, oh yes, my Disney blush. This is the Belle Colourpop Press Powder Blush. Wasn't sure which brand this was when I first saw it. Um, Huda Beauty is coming out with these beautiful rose highlighters called the Nymph All Over Highlighting Powder. So it looks like you can use it like anywhere on your body, which is interesting. Huge, huge pan, but it's $55 for a single highlighter, which is... Ah! 
astronomical. I th kind of thought this was like a round two of the Smashbox Red highlighters, which I originally wanted to purchase, but I heard kind of mediocre things about the formula. I think this is really, really beautiful. From what I can tell, it seems to be only like one shade, which is a flattering warm bronze shade as Trend Mood describes it. So I don't think this is going to work on my skin tone, but I think this is a really, really beautiful highlighter. So I was kind of interested. It does kind of look to be like one of those big chalet formulas, so which I am Reezy's. Regardless though, beautiful. Very overpriced, but beautiful. <laughs> Next thing I want to talk about was the new palette from Patrick Starr's Beauty Line, which is called One Size. I love the messaging and the kind of philosophy behind the brand. Um, in terms of first products, I definitely don't think of Patrick as somebody who does like really colorful bright makeup looks. So I wasn't really expecting anything super punchy. Honestly, the palette didn't look anything special to me until I saw the swatches. I think the swatches look absolutely stunning. Kind of like a Manny MUA um, Lunar Beauty Strawberry Dream palette. I don't think I would have been interested in this had I not seen how the shadows looked. Very neutral with some kind of more glam cool toned pops of color in there. The palette actually in terms of color scheme reminds me a lot of the KKW Beauty and Mario palette as well as a kind of more punchy version of the Master Palette by Mario from ABH. So kind of similar color schemes if the blue was just a little bit punchier and if it was more matte dominated. But I think this palette is beautiful and I think it's going to be a really really functional palette just in terms of what it can create. That being said of course I do have colors like this so I probably do not need this palette but I think the formula looks absolutely stunning and I think Patrick is just a wonderful force in the beauty community that I would be happy to support. So I see that a lot of influencers right now during quarantine are launching their own brands, which I think is not, it's not the best time probably, but I think this has been long in the works for them and I can see that they're really happy and very passionate about it. So, so I'm really happy for Patrick and we'll talk about um, Desi and Jackie Ina later on in the video, but this palette is beautiful and I did have to like actively kind of talk myself out of it saying like, you have these colors, you don't need this one but damn, it's so pretty. <laughs> All right, allow me to briefly interrupt your regularly scheduled programming to bring you an eye look. So the eye look portion of this video is sponsored kindly by Odin's Eye, and I'm gonna be using the Solmon palette, which I've been talking about for like the last five months on my channel. I did a full Indie Brand Spotlight video review on the entire Odin's Eye line, I think last month. So if you wanna see my review of all their products, especially their Alva collection, go ahead and check that video out. But this palette I really enjoy, and I think the color scheme is very unique from what other indie brands do. So I'm gonna do kind of like neutral with a twist eye look today, and I'm gonna first start out by grabbing this shade here called Soul. This formula is really nice. I think the mattes in the um, Solmon palette really shine through. Not to say the shimmers aren't good, but I think the mattes in here are just really, really stunning, especially the lavender, which we're going to be using later. I'm just kind of fluffing this warm toned, mid tone brown throughout my crease. I would say the formulas are very consistent between the Odin's Eye palettes, so I used the Alva palette in my last anti-haul, and to me the mattes in that palette and this one, despite being different sized pans, which can usually mess with the formula, I think they're very consistent. It's a very creamy, very dimethicone matte formula, so not a ton of powder kick up honestly, so I think that makes it a little bit easier to work with than a bit of a more powdery but still pigmented formula like Anastasia. And especially for like doing neutral type looks, I think that's my favorite thing. The name of the game for today's look is just mixing colors that look like they shouldn't be together, but work somehow. So I'm gonna grab Uranus down here, which is this beautiful green, lime green duochrome shade. And just gonna kind of pat that all over my lid. Kind of focusing it mostly on the inner part of my eye, but then blending it outwards. And I like using my finger for this one, just most duochromes I feel like apply best with the finger. All right, so you could stop here and you would just have this kind of like wash of brown in the crease with this beautiful green duochrome. I'm gonna grab just a tiny bit of this kind of champagne shade in the middle called I don't know how to pronounce it. It's L-J-U-S. And just pat that on the very outer edge of where I placed Uranus. And that just kind of neutralizes the green. So the next color that we put on, which is not anywhere near green, won't be super weird. All right, and now for the fun part, I'm gonna grab the lavender shade here called Aura. And just lightly on the outer edge, as if, as if I'm kind of doing like a winged liner, but not really, I'm just gonna fluff lavender. We're getting a kind of lilac wash on the very outer edge of the eye which contrasts really, really beautifully with the green, in my opinion. Some people might think it's ugly, but whatever. This is my favorite kind of lilac purple shade because you don't even need to put down like a white base or anything. You can use this on top of other shadows, not directly on the wet base, and it still shows up like this. Seriously, one of the best shades I have in my collection. So if you don't really want to do the mixing of the green and the purple, you can definitely go in with one of the more neutral shades rather than the green, um, but I really like how it looks personally. And for this purple, I'm kind of mostly using a stamping motion and then just lightly blending out the edges. That I think helps to give pastel shades like this the most impact on the eyes. But honestly, for this formula, you don't really need to do that. You can do a little bit more blending because it's really pigmented.
Gotta be honest, I didn't plan out today's eye look, so I wasn't sure how that was gonna look, but... <laughs> Wow. That is the eye look for today created with the Soul Man palette from Odin's Eyes. So thank you again to them for sponsoring this portion of today's video. But let's get back to the anti-haul. Okay, where was I? Um, I just talked about Patrick Starr's stuff. Speaking of Patrick's, Mr. Ta. What are you doing to me? I think I got the most tags on this one, fittingly so. Patrick Ta is basically coming out with a collection personally targeted at victimizing me. It's basically an extension to the Major Glow line, so instead of just having those Major Glow highlighting mists, which I personally really enjoy, he's coming out with a Major Glow softening lip mask, a Major Glow mist, which is just a dewy ass mist, and Major Glow all over glow balms, which are basically like balmy cream highlighters for all over the body. Speaking of glow, I'm gonna go in with the Hourglass Ambient Metallic Strobe Palette for my highlighter. Um, <laughs> Um, ciao. Anyway, so... I don't know where to start. I'm not going to be buying the lip mask, which looks to be really, really small. I did see Patrick using it in his ColourPop Masterclass. It looks really, really nice, but I did see the packaging, and it does seem to be a very, very small amount of lip balm for $22. thing with Patrick Todd's beauty line, I think his products are nice overall, but they do tend to be a little bit more on the expensive side. And so far, my experience with his products have been so hit and miss that I don't justify it all the time. The Dewy Milk Mist, which is advertised as glass skin in the mist... Nope. Nope. And then as for the Major Glow All Over Balm, there are two shades. One of them looks like it would be the one that works for me, and it's a transparent shade. So I mentioned this with the Becca Zero collection. I don't need any more transparent balm highlighters because I have the Tower 28 Super Do No Shade, which I think is beautiful and is pretty much the same thing that this one is. So in one fell swoop, that is the entire Major Glow collection from Patrick Ta. I do think it's beautiful, and I do think his releases just consistently make sense for like his aesthetic of makeup. That doesn't mean that I need to buy them now. <laughs> So Pat McGrath came out with a new mascara called the Dark Star Mascara, and the reason I'm not showing a picture of it on screen... Hear me out, I didn't buy this. <laughs> the Pat McGrath team, despite me consistently shitting on their lip balm, um, was kind enough to send me the mascara, and I've been trying it out recently. So I guess I'll just share my thoughts on this mascara right now. Tis mediocre. <laughs> Um, I'm so sorry, Pat. Pretty nice hourglass kind of fatter wand. Kind of reminds me of the Too Faced Born This Way wand. So as far as high-end mascaras go, I love the way this one works. I think it does a really nice job of separating my lashes and giving me a good amount of volume. I wouldn't say it's the most lengthening mascara, however. I do enjoy using this one. I haven't noticed any problems with smudging throughout the day, which is my main problem with mascaras. And while it does look a lot like Too Faced, um, did I... Was I saying born this way? I meant better than sex. While it does look a lot like better than sex on application, it doesn't have the awful um, flaking problem that better than sex does. So I think this is a great dupe, albeit a more expensive version, so not really a dupe. I don't think it's worth it, and I'm gonna talk about this in a video very soon, but there are certain items of makeup where I just don't think that it's worth splurging a lot of money on, and mascara is honestly one of them. So while it happens that all the mascaras I have open right now that I'm trying to finish up are high-end mascaras, I don't think I'm gonna be repurchasing them just because I know what I like, and that is Essence Lash Princess. So if you just like love the way that um, better than sex mascara makes your eyelashes look, but you don't love the way that it flakes. I think you would probably enjoy this mascara, but do I think it's worth the money by any means? No. So I will enjoy using this one up, but I won't be repurchasing it, and that is why I don't generally buy high-end mascaras. Next on my list are the BH Cosmetics, um, limited edition monochrome palettes that are coming out, um, or have already come out, I think. Basically just small six pan monochrome palettes. And honestly, I think that this is the cutest thing that BH has come out in a long time with. So we love to see it. I think the one I would be most likely to pick up would be <laughs> predictably the purple one. I haven't had the best of experience with BH's bright colors, honestly. I've tried their um, Brazil palette, which I think was okay and was like a good affordable rainbow palette, but wasn't my favorite formula. So I'm not sure if I would completely love these palettes. But overall, I do think this is a cute release. Good job, BH, but I'm not gonna buy it. <laughs> Unrelated to beauty, I very much want Desi Perkins' new sunglasses line. So Desi came out with a new brand called Desi, and it's sunglasses, which I think is awesome. I love her design skills, so I have a pair of her Key and Desi Perkins sunglasses, which have this beautiful fade. I love wearing these, and I always get like questions and compliments when I wear them in public. Um, they're cool. That being said, I am not buying any more sunglasses because I, despite living in Southern California, probably the sunniest place on earth, I never wear sunglasses. <laughs> I always forget to bring them with me and it's always like the sunniest day where I need my sunglasses so I just walk around like this all the time. I'm not allowing myself to buy any more sunglasses until I start remembering to wear the 
one beautiful pair that I have. I am, however, definitely, definitely partaking in buying Jackie Ina's Forever Mood Candles. I'm particularly interested in Left on Red. Coconut milk, tropical fruit, coconut, and caramel. How dare you? Honestly, probably gonna place an order as soon as I burn through my next like three Bath and Body Works candles, which shouldn't take that much time. I go through maybe like a candle every two weeks when I'm studying. I'm taking my second summer class right now, so yeah, I will be buying some candles very, very soon. I'm very excited about it. And finally, to finish up, I'll talk about two things I was tagged in by some of you guys, but I'm actually not interested in. So, kind of contrary to the rest of the products in this video, what do I want on my lips? Um... Let's just do Fenty, honestly. <laughs> so first off, the Cover FX Tinted Moisturizer. Um, does seem pretty up my alley in terms of finish. It seems to be a nice dewy, very light coverage product. But honestly, I'm just, I don't know. Tinted moisturizers don't really do it for me. For me, tinted moisturizers, though it seems like something that would be like within my aesthetic, if my skin is doing good enough where I don't need to use foundation, I'd rather just not wear foundation and just do spot concealing. That's just me. But for me, tinted moisturizers don't really have a utility in my routine because if my skin's doing that nicely, I'm not going to be using any coverage product all over my face. And then finally, Dose of Colors came out with two really pretty new palettes. Dose has always had these kind of like five pan palettes in their collection, um, but one of them is a beautiful green palette that looks pretty much like a five pan version of Gemini, and then the other one is a really nice like smoky kind of cooler toned one with a beautiful burgundy. I'm not getting the green one just because I have Gemini, <laughs> so I don't need it. And then I don't love darker colored eyeshadows on myself anymore, so even though this color scheme really does speak to me, I don't think I would get a lot of use out of this. I don't know, none of the five pan palettes really, really, really speak to me. Even though they seem like good color schemes, in theory none of them just say hey you would love this i'm gonna go maybe change my clothes all right guys that is it i hope you guys enjoyed today's video thank you so much again to odin's eye for sponsoring the eyeshadow portion of today's video but that was your monthly anti-haul but this time a little bit more of a positive version because it was items that buttered my muffin i don't know if that's gonna make it into the working title guys <laughs> sounds a little sexual <laughs> anyways if you like this video please give it a thumbs up make sure you're subscribed down below follow me on instagram twitter and the tickety talk because it's still kicking right now as i speak it might be gone by the time i post this video and if you made it to the very end of this video you get the bonus meme do something brilliant today love you bye accent check adele weber from Grey's anatomy <clears throat> Me or this hospital? Okay. <clears throat>